Hi and welcome to this video where I will be making my June junk journal. And at the end of the video I will also be announcing the winner of the giveaway, so stay tuned. This is going to be a no sew junk journal and I'm going to use this vintage book that I found at the flea market and I'm just showing you in comparison to my May journal that it's quite a bit smaller. And I'm going to be making my own spine because I'm not giving up on <laughs> not having a gator mouth uh, junk journal. So I'm going to be cutting this up. Uh, so if you don't like seeing books cut up, then please stop watching. <laughs> it's going to get brutal. So if you're looking for books that you could use the covers for junk journals, what you need to pay attention to is you saw on the top there, I was showing you there's a gap between the where the book pages are sewn in and the actual spine of the cover. So you need that gap to be able to remove the pages. And then all you do is you take a Stanley knife and you just cut down both sides of the book pages just like that and you have the cover. Now if you're going to just use the cover as is with the spine, then you're good to go. You might want to reinforce it a little bit with some cardstock if the spine doesn't seem sturdy enough, but otherwise um, that's your cover. Uh, and you can sew right through the spine if you wanted to. That, was, that would be the easiest way. But in this video, I'm going to be, as you can see, I'm going to be cutting off the spine. And I know this is hard to watch. It was hard to do. It's a pretty spine, but I knew it wasn't going to be wide enough. So this is my first time at trying this. I did not um, try this before making the video. So bear with me. I'm actually making a few mistakes as I go along, but I decided to load this up anyway because I think you guys can learn from my mistakes and I do fix it. So um, I think this, this might be valuable or useful for you if you've never made one yourself. So now I have the two, the, the two covers, the front and the back. And I already pre-cut this piece of cardboard, which is the back of a, I think, a um, watercolor pad. And it has pretty much the same width as the covers. And this is some, um, like, book, I think it's book binding, I don't know what you'd call it, material. And it has, I found one that kind of has a similar color to what the spine was originally. If you don't have something like this, you could just use fabric or you can use white tape. Um, whatever you have on hand really and this is a glue. It's just a it's a very Strong compact glue, but I have also done this with regular white glue So but I have this so I thought I would use it. So I'm just spreading it out now With my brush which afterwards I'm actually gonna throw away because it got hard <laughs> So don't do this with your good watercolor brushes, please now I'm just going to Put that down on that book binding fabric or I don't know what it's called it's not really a tape because it doesn't stick <laughs> so I don't know I found this at a local store so unfortunately I can't give you a link but if you search for a book binding tape on Amazon you will definitely find some things and also on Aliexpress you can just search for it so now you saw I'm, I'm, I put glue on the sides as well to glue those covers down. And you have to be sure what's very important here is to leave a little bit of a gap between the spine and the covers. Otherwise, you will not be able to close it. So I left just like one or two millimeters in between. So maybe, maybe an eighth of an inch or a sixteenth of an inch is probably enough. And as you see, the piece of fabric is a bit longer. And I, I did it like that so that I could fold it down. And um, yeah, I did get some glue on that, but it doesn't matter in the end, you won't see it. So now I'm just kind of burnishing it to make sure that it really sticks well. And I'm also going into those creases of the, the gap between the spine and the covers. I'm going to do the same thing for the bottom part. Silence. 
Nobody can see me, see me. Nobody can see me, see me. I wonder, can you hear me? Hear me? Oh. And now I took another piece, which is the same width that I'm also gonna add the glue to and I'm just gonna glue onto the inside of the spine <clears throat> just like that and same thing I'm just gonna make sure to burnish it and to to um, form those folds there just want to make sure it's nice and sturdy and I'm gonna let that dry and in the meantime I picked some papers, book pages that um, I was going to put in my signature. So here I'm just showing you some of the choices that I made, all different kinds of book pages. And for the first time that I'm making junk journals, I'm also going to be adding some designer papers, but it's the thin kind. It's not the, the cardstock kind because I didn't want to have such thick pages but they are just the thin kind. And a lot of these papers are actually from Happy Mails. Love those architectural ones. This is really cute with all the birds and owls and an old map. So these are the designer ones I, I, I decided to use. I don't have that many which are the thin kind, but um, I found these, so I'll be using those. So. <coughs> now one mis the first mistake I'm making is I took the original book page as a guide as to how wide and tall my pages needed to be but I didn't take into consideration that with the binding method that you will see me do I, um, I actually needed to make them smaller and you will see why so here I made the four signatures so each signature has one of the designer papers on the outside and then I put the big book pages on the inside and some of them also have another designer paper on the inside but not all of them. So there's four signatures. I believe they each have five pages folded in half. Three, four, or four pages. Four or five, I'm actually not sure. <laughs> um, so, and these already pre-cut. This is the heavy cardstock. And um, I pre-cut them to just be a little bit wider than the end papers that were already there. And as you can see, I'm just inking those up to vintage them a bit more. And I'm using my vintage photo distress oxide that I always use for inking everything. And now I'm just going to glue those into the book. And this time I'm just using my regular white glue because the other one... Um, besides the fact that it smells really bad, um, it's just so hard to get off your fingers if you get it on your fingers. So I prefer using this white glue. I'm just using my sponge brush to even it out. And then I'm just going to stick those right on. One. And you see it's overlapping this um, book tape. So I do the same thing for the back side. I work in shadows. No one ever sees me, sees me. I'm losing every battle. Can somebody save me, save me? I never know which way I'm supposed to go. All I do is stare. Okay, and now, so the binding method I'm using is, um, I stole this from Joanna Cloth. I will link her videos below. She made a fantastic series. Um, I don't even think it's done yet. I think she's still in the middle of the series where she made a book and the series is called Nameless. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you will have seen it. Um, <laughs> seeing how many viewers she has. I think all of you have seen it. <laughs> She's awesome. I really, really love her and her videos and I really enjoy watching them. So I'm using her binding method of making holes into the spine and then threading your pages through. And I thought I would try this method so that I could, in the event that it's getting too thick, 
and it's very likely that it will, that I could just take some pages out and also this way um, if you wanted to sew some pages after you've put them in you can easily slide them out, sew on them and slide them back in. So I really love the flexibility of that. Now the second mistake I'm making here is when I made the holes, so usually when I sew my pages in I measure everything exactly and it works out well but for some reason I thought I could just wing it and so I made these holes and um, I made two holes because I thought I was going to have four signatures like I made but the holes are totally not centered or anything on the page, on the spine so when you look they're all like they're wonky you see that there's a much larger space on the right so I thought okay let me see what it looks like once I have the signatures inside see how they're spaced because I'm putting two signatures to one hole and please go see Johanna's video on how to thread it because she explains it really well and she shows it several times I didn't really get it until I made it myself although she shows it really nicely but it, I was very confused even though she showed it so many times anyway when you make it you'll understand it's very easy and then I realized when I put them in that um, as I said before the pages are too too um, long so they have to go in between the holes they cannot be as tall as your the as the size of the book they have to be smaller so here I just decided to cut them all down very easily by just drawing a line with my ruler and then cutting them with the scissor. So now I have my four signatures the correct size. And as for the length of the thread, so she says to leave a, to, or to, to cut a very, very long thread so that you have space on the bottom to tie some beads on so I did that and how I decided to measure it is I used five lengths the height of the insert for each of these so there you see my first insert is tied in and you always tie in two inserts into one hole so I have two holes and I have four signatures and so you basically you, you put the thread around the signature, then you thread the one through the top and then back into the bottom. And the bottom one you thread uh, from the inside outside and then you just tie them together. I don't know if that made any sense. <laughs> but that's what I did. So as I said, head over to her channel please to watch that episode on how to add them. So I'm doing that of course for all four signatures and this is such an easy and quick process. I think any, any beginner can do this and I love the flexibility of it. So I'm doing the same thing with the third and the fourth signature. I've just sped this up a little more because you don't have to watch me doing this four times <laughs> or at least not not that slowly. So that's the third one. Now it's going to be the fourth one. And it's, it's, it's a very different feeling of having these kind of signatures if you're used to having them sewn in because of course they're not as tight as when you sew them in. But I think it's a good trade-off to have the flexibility with them. So now I was checking, okay, how does the spacing look? And I decided that um, I oh yeah and then I saw that strangely one of the one of the papers wasn't incorrectly um, so yeah you can see how easy it is to slide it through so I love that flexibility of it and there you see I didn't like that on the right hand side there was this big gap so I just decided to make another hole um, on the top and the bottom and to make two more signatures to then put in there. So I've done that now. It was the same process so I didn't have to film that. So now there's three inside and that is much much better. And there you see the back is better like this. 
it's not 100% precise, but it works for me. And um, I really enjoyed making this. This was a lot of fun. And now the best part comes. So this is the part I had the most fun with. Uh, no, first, <laughs> sorry, I forgot. Uh, first, we're adding this um, piece of lace trim, which is self-adhesive, so very easy to add. It just adds a little, little something extra, and I'm just cutting two of these because I'm going to put it in the front and the back. So, so easy. It just gives it a more finished look, I think. I love this cover. And of course, you could continue decorating it as you like, but I didn't want to cover this beautiful vintage floral cover too much. So now is the fun part of adding all the charms. So please, I'm linking this video below as well. So Johanna has a separate video for how she attaches her charms. And I love it because it's so easy. You don't need any tools. So these are some um, charms and, and things I found around my flat and my craft supplies. So a lot of them are different kinds of buttons. Then this is from an from a old jewelry piece that I got from the flea market that I took apart. These are some fairy charms from AliExpress. This was also this mirror was from a um, bracelet from AliExpress from a Alice in Wonderland bracelet. This I actually don't end up using this little clothespin. What else do we have? Yeah, we have these feathers, also AliExpress. Very cute. And this is from a very, very old bracelet that I think I had as a teenager or something. Yeah, so I'm not going to touch them all, but I'm going to work with those. And I'm, I'm also, I have this little box of, of extra beads, so I'll be adding some more beads as well. So I'm just threading everything through and making sure that they are not all at the same height, but at, on different heights and um, making knots in between to secure them. But as I said, I'm not going to show you this in detail because Johanna has a fantastic video on how to do this. And my gosh, you guys, it is so much fun. I, I've never done this before and I enjoyed it so much. And I really love how it turned out and I love the sound it makes. And um, it's, I thought it might be in the way when you actually do your journaling, but I don't think it will be. So even when you have it laying flat like this when it's open, I don't think those are going to be in the way. I mean, we'll see. I haven't journaled in it yet, but I think it'll be fine. Because I thought maybe it would be better to add them at the end when you're done. But it's nice to enjoy having them on there while you're working in the journal. So I think it's better to put them on at the beginning. And the cool thing is that you can keep adding things even at a later point because all you're doing is tying things on. So it's so cute. I really love it. <laughs> so much fun. And I'm just going to shorten all these strings because they are quite long. And I think it still gives me enough space to add one or two more pieces if I find them. So look how fun is that. Oh my gosh, I love it. Yeah, and so you see, it, it stands also with those, tr with those charms because you can just kind of um, move them outwards. And there's my my final journal and I love that it has a wide spine this time this is the widest I've ever had and it's quite small so it'll be interesting to work on small pages again so I'm just giving you a very very quick overlook and flip through of the pages yeah so six signatures inside with I think five pages each and some charms dangling from the bottom. So uh, let me know if you give this a try. Um, I love it and um, can't wait to start working in it. And now uh, what you've all been waiting for, let's see who the winner is for the giveaway that I had a week ago for In Love Arts. So I chose this random comment picker and it chose Let's see, it's Marcia. Congratulations, Marcia. Woohoo! So I will be sending you the code for In Love Arts for your $50 as soon as possible. Congratulations, well done. 
and thank you to everybody who participated I loved reading all your comments it's so nice to see how much kindness we have around us and we should appreciate it every single day thanks so much for watching take care hope to see you in the next one bye